What's up guys and girls, welcome to episode, I think this is episode number 13 of the Better With Brock podcast. Uh, I've got my client, uh, I would call him a friend as well. We've been in each other's world for a while now, well over a year, I think. Um, maybe even longer than two, I'm not sure. Um, just about two, I think. Yeah, just about two. So um, uh, Jordan's an awesome dude. He's achieved a, a, a crazy transformation. I've posted him a couple of times on Instagram. Um, like he, he's, he's achieved an awesome, I guess you'd say fat loss transformation. Um, and, and I guess what we've been really working on together is like building because fat loss is, is, is quite, I think fat loss is easier than building, right? It's, it's like losing fat is more simple than like building right. because building takes a lot more patience and you end up even, you know, aesthetically looking worse <laughs> and trying to be patient <laughs> where in fat loss, you can just go, okay, yeah, this week I'm looking leaner. Um, you know, I'm on lower calories, but it's very easy to visually see. So building's always a challenge. Um, but yeah, Jordan and I have been working together for a while now. It's been an awesome journey. We started off one-on-one. -on -one. He's now smashing built by Brock, which is really cool to see the stuff that we learned together and you like applying it um, with, um, with your own, you know, workouts and programs without the accountability of me hounding you like, Hey man, where's your photos? Um, so that's, um, yeah, that's sure. great, man. Um, so I, yeah, I really just, uh, we were talking about it before, like, I really just want to bring him on to like, I guess make fitness less daunting. Like he's, he's still, you know, like living his life, working, doing his hobbies. Um, he's, he's big into self-development as well. Books. We talked about it quite a lot. Um, and he's still being able to manage his fitness and, and, and actually exceed in his fitness and, 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 and achieve awesome goals. And often I think when people look at fitness, they're like, oh, that's too much. Like that's a, you know, I'll have no social life or I'll, you know, I won't be able to see my friends. You know, I won't be able to eat the foods I love. I won't be able to do this and that. But I guess what we're trying to do is, I guess, with this conversation or what my goal is, is almost break down the barrier of entry to get into fitness. Like you don't need these like prerequisites right. of like, you have to be this or that, or you have to give up this and that, you have to sacrifice this and that. It's, it, it's literally starting where you're at and just making small improvements like day to day, week to week, month to month, and just seeing where that takes you. So Jordan, man, I'd love you to introduce yourself and just, you know, give a bit of a background story, you know, what you do, who you are, what you like, and, you know, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, for sure, man. Thanks so much for, um, for having me on Brock. Um, it's, uh, yeah, like you said, we've been working together for almost two years now, which is, which is crazy to think, man. Um, but like Brock was saying, my name is Jordan. I'm actually from California. Um, I live in this smaller town in like kind of central California. If I mentioned it, no one would really know <laughs> where it's Go at. Go on, mention it, mention it. It's called Turlock, California. Turlock. Um, Turlock, yeah. Turlock. Uh, but I'm, okay. I'm originally from the Silicon Valley, as, as some would know it, you know, the Bay Area, San Jose, California. Um, lived there most of my life. And then I moved out here. Um, my parents actually moved out here and I, I actually transferred to school. Um, finished my bachelor's degree out here and I've been out here ever since. So 10 years has flown by, which is crazy. Yeah, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I just, uh, a little bit about me, you know, I, uh, I started a new career this year, which is um, kind of crazy, but I, I've been loving it so far. Um, I, I work in the insurance industry. Um, I'm in insurance sales. Um, but I, I, I never foresaw myself being in this type of industry, which is crazy, but I do love, and I think we've connected to about this a little bit is the more, I have more of an entrepreneurial, I think, um, or at least I'd like to think, uh, entrepreneurial, um, viewpoint towards a career, you know, um, and building something, um, for the future, you know, is where I'm always looking at, you know? Um, so yeah, I kind of just, I was working in a, a corporate job, I guess you could say. I worked for a rental company called Hertz. And, um, oh yeah, they're over here too. Yeah. When you, yeah, like, hire I, your I guess car. they're worldwide. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I got, I'm saying it like it's only in America. They're all over the place. But, um, yeah, I worked there for, well, actually, since I got out of college, I was there for like five years. I didn't feel like I was progressing where I wanted to be. And, you know, I was kind of burnt out. And, um, I was offered an opportunity to join the company I'm with now. And I'm with, I'm in management with them now, but which, which is cool. But, um, 
you know, my day to day is, is different every day, which is fun. I love that challenge. Uh, but it also brings new challenges to this ongoing like fitness journey that we were talking about. Um, so I still, yeah. So what ahead. are those challenges? So the challenges is my schedule is not set. Um, and you know, I'm on the go a lot, right? Uh, there's two days in the week that I'm in an office. So those are really more structured. Mm. But other than that, the other days I'm out and, uh, running around meeting with clients, usually in their homes and things like that. Um, and so the challenges are really, you know, when it comes to nutrition, it's either I pre-plan my meals, which I'm not the greatest at. Um, <laughs> Join the club, man. Join the club. <laughs> not the greatest at doing that. It would probably save me money, but, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a single bachelor right now, so I can afford a little bit here and there. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, that's the challenge is, is, you know, eating on the go. You know how it is. It's like you got to find somewhere that you can eat something that's relatively um, within your within your budget, I guess. Um, uh, but what I love about what we do, man, is that it's flexible, you know. Uh, so I am able to just kind of work whatever I'm eating that day into into my budget and work around it. Um, so say you're out like like you got your day where you're out with your clients, you're meeting them, and you're out and about because this really trips people up like how to eat and then it's like oh well there's nothing healthy around so then they just cave and just you know get the pizza that they weren't going to get or <laughs> you, right. you know, like so how do you stay on track when you're out and about and it's like almost like oh i don't really know what these calories are is it high is it low what should i get how do you navigate around that so i think what's cool is now we we're in a place where we have so much tools and resources to us you know um for instance you and i are big advocates of fit, my fitness pal man i use that mm. all the time um and what's great about it is that you can search foods and kind of there's a lot of verified foods on there which, you know they're fairly accurate i would say they're not always 100 percent, but within a, a margin of error you know yeah like a um, like a guess is better than no guess that's how i like right, to think right, about right. it yeah so you can use that to, you know, kind of see where um, different restaurants and foods, you know, are going to be, you know, like healthier or not, you know, as far as how much calories are in that meal. I use that all the time. And I've, I think it's just kind of trial and error, man. I've learned how to find places that I can get simple, you know, like I can, I can get something like grilled chicken or, or um, chicken and rice or vegetables or something or salad or something like that um, on the go, that makes it a lot easier to eat within my, within my macros that day. I don't go over budget, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, and something I do personally is like, if I'm out and I'm tracking and I know that I have to hit something and the menu's a bit more, well, you know, like whatever, or there's like gray areas, like it's a lasagna and I've like, haven't had like, you know, you don't know what the calories are in lasagna or yeah. like, I literally just go for what I think is like an okay guess. So it'll say like one piece and you're like, well, what's one piece? You know, like one piece to a little yeah. kid is like the size of your hand, but one piece to me when I'm starving is like exactly. the size of my face. So, yes. so like one, so I'll just go like, okay, one piece. And you know, let's say it's, you know, 30 grams of carbs and you know, 10 fat and 10 protein, whatever. I'll just go, okay, then, because then that's better than just having nothing. And once again, right. leading to that like unawareness of what you've consumed and then, by the end of the day or the next meal, you're like, I don't know what I had. So then you just kind of go veering off course. But even if that one piece of lasagna is way off, at least like mentally, you're still staying accountable to like your fitness goal, which I think is yeah. like much better in the bigger scheme of things than just giving up and saying, Oh, I ate lasagna. Now I don't know what to do. Right. I think I was telling a friend about this actually earlier today, actually, I was talking to them and they were asking me, you track your calories. And I was like, yeah, um, I, you know, I think people think it's a daunting task and it might be at the beginning, but I think if you like, once you get in the habit of it, it really is not like you, it's just a habit that you form anything else, you know, it's building upon habits, little things build upon each other, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's what I told her. I was, you know, like, look, if you're, if you're at home and you're cooking, you have much more control about the proportions and you can measure things and stuff, but you're out at a restaurant, you don't. Right. So your best guess is probably better than no guess or nothing at all, you know? 
and yeah, just as long as you're within that range at least yeah yeah and 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 like i think tracking is is one of those things that you get better at over time like when i first started um and sorry i'll add on to that it's something you get better at over time but it's also like you go through different phases like at the start when i first started tracking i was quite young i had no idea what calories were protein carbs and all this kind of stuff i didn't follow sort of macros i picked a random number out of the sky and said that's how many calories I'm going to do. I didn't even use a calculator. I was just, I just thought that was cool. <laughs> like, okay, we'll just do this number. So I just picked a random number. And I remember when I was like young, I thought like, okay, get shredded, whatever. And it was 1500, which was way too low for me. Like that's more like calories for a small girl. And I was like a six foot dude, you know? And I was still, I was just like 1500 calories, whatever. And then I wasn't even focusing on protein or anything. I was trying to eat healthy foods that I knew of. Um, and I was like, I wasn't the best at tracking. <clears throat> So what I did was I, I, like I almost went to the other side of things where I was super extreme. Like I was like, I had a food scale everywhere, like at home, like we went and bought one and my dad was like, what are you doing? Cause I didn't do this stuff before. I was just trying it out. So I was like weighing everything, like weighing vegetables at night, like weighing me and it almost looks obsessive. And I think that's where the whole like tracking your calories is obsessive and it's a, it's bad for you and all that kind of stuff. And I think, you know, if you have disordered eating, maybe it's not the best thing for your mindset to be tracking every calorie because it does play with your mind sometimes. But I think if you can handle it and you're just going through this kind of time where you're kind of obsessing, you kind of need to obsess over things sometimes just to get a understanding or not obsess, but just like go to an extreme that you wouldn't really do long term just to really understand yeah. it. So like I was tracking right. everything. I've, I've, I've talked about it before. I've counted almonds. I was like weighing my fruit. I was weighing like the meat. I was like, you, you know, really obsessing, trying to get the, the exact number, like 1500 calories. If I didn't, it was like a failure, you know, and I was getting really into it. But that was kind of like the first stage. And then after that, like, as you kind of get into this obsessive thing, you kind of like, instead of counting my almonds, I would look at it and go, okay, that's probably, you know, 50 grams, or that's probably half a cup, like, be a bit more flexible. And, 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 and that's probably like the mid phase where you just kind of like, almost, like you're still tracking things, but it's like, oh, it's like a cup of this. It's not like the exact 237 grams of pumpkin that you would like obsess about. Yeah. Um, that's kind of like the mid phase. And then I'd say like the phase I'm in now is just like, like, well, when I'm tracking, I'm tracking sometimes. So I am still weighing food and stuff like that, but I'm not as obsessed about it. Like it has to be this and it has to be that. And I have this, like, I can almost eyeball things where it's like, you know, you have this better understanding of what foods are. So you don't have to, right. like one thing that's daunting about calorie tracking is you think you're obsessing and like it takes 20 minutes out of your day or even 30 minutes to do all the stuff. But as you get better and faster, like it kind of, yeah, you have different phases and then like, you know, tracking really will only take up three to five minutes a day. Like everyone has three to right. five minutes. Like, like, you know, you just look at it and, and you can even save the foods that you use. Like if you always have this for breakfast or lunch, you can just save it and go bang. Like, it's not that it's not that full on it can start full on which is where it's tricky but once you get past that hurdle it, it actually gets a lot easier have you found the same i yeah exact same man honestly um what's crazy is i've well to be honest with you like i literally just bought a food scale like i haven't used one in a long time i misplaced right. mine a long time ago yeah i just haven't used it in a while so i kind of went through the same phase i was measuring things you know but i think you kind of have to to get an accurate idea of mm. what is an ounce of chicken you know yeah and so you know oh well that looks to be about four ounces you know you can kind of tell just by eyeballing it after you've done this for a while and that's when it becomes i think a little bit easier um to do it but like you said man it's so much easier than people make it out to be i think um just because I, I don't know, I've been doing it for a long time now, but um, mm. really it takes me like, I literally just in the habit of, you know, I, I, when I eat the meal, then I just, I just pull out my phone, pump it, pump, pump, and I'm, I'm done within like a minute, especially if it's stuff that I eat on a regular basis. Cause like you said, it'll save those um, common, commonly used foods in there. Yeah. It'll be like and on the it, recent food list. Yeah. Yeah. And it just takes like literally 30 seconds for me to do it. And now I know, you know, pretty much when I'm eating most stuff that I eat a lot, you know, I can, I pretty much know what the calories are going to be. Um, I, and the macros, I just punch it in there so I can make sure that I'm tracking it for the day. But I, I already know most of the time. 
Yeah, and I think that's where it becomes like really handy. Like for example, when I was on on honeymoon and when we were away, I was just eating whatever and like, you know, like I really did not care. I was like, I'm not <laughs> I'm not gonna go to the honeymoon and right. like, try and track my food. Like, you know, I'm not an Olympic yeah, athlete. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not a bodybuilder about to step on stage, who am I? And I was like, yeah, you know, I, I wanna enjoy the food as well because like, you know, you're at this yeah. nice restaurant, this holiday, you know, once in a lifetime, whatever, of course you're just gonna enjoy yourself. So I was just right. like eating whatever, but then also like in the back of my mind, not in an obsessive way, but I was just like, okay, you know, that's probably high in protein or, you know, I'd get a whole plate of dessert because it was like, you know, buffet breakfast. And I was like, well, you know, this is, you know, <laughs> this is out of control. <laughs> like, like, I don't even <laughs> yeah, know sure. how many calories are in this, but it's a lot. But like, you know, it, like it wasn't affecting me negatively. I was just like aware. And that's like all it is. It's like awareness, you know, so like yeah. you can understand yeah that you're having heaps of calories if you're having heaps of calories, but at least you're aware of it. So if you want to act on it, like try and counteract like, okay, well then I probably shouldn't, you know, I probably won't watch TV and just lie around all day. I might go for a bike. I might go for a snorkel, yeah. you know, like, which is stuff that we did. Um, just cause really my wife and I enjoyed that. Like, but like we ate like literally so much, like two or three plates, like every meal, like, and we'd usually just have one at home. So like, we were like, like, <laughs> like we were guessing, we were like, man, we probably ate like, three to five thousand calories a day and like for her like for a girl that's a pretty decent effort uh for me for that's sure. you, you know kind of like a normal <laughs> day back home sometimes but i was like man that's a good effort but like w like we calculated it like we only gained well like not really like over the top but like we only gained around one kg each was like not that much like you know for a honeymoon yeah. where we spent like a week literally eating our face off but like you know we were also physically active you know and yeah. instead of like so we saw everyone else like contacting because like uh, when you're at the place you got this like 24 7 butler right so so they would do whatever and whenever you wanted but like we didn't really have anything for them to do because like like they were calling them and saying can you pick us up to go to dinner you know so they'd pick you up in the golf buggy drive you to dinner dr drop you off back home but it was like a five minute bike like on the bicycle or like a 10 minute bicycle if it was the other side of the island so we just cycled everywhere and it's like small things like that that made a huge difference and not that i was yeah. thinking oh i had 1500 calories for breakfast so i need to cycle there that's going to be about 200 <laughs> calories like you know i wasn't doing that yeah. but like having the awareness kind of makes you like okay like i probably should move a bit more because i have been consuming a ton like it's that background knowledge that i think helps later on because tracking calories you know like we're doing it quite often but like as we get older and it's like um, or even certain periods of our life where we don't want to track, we may not even do it, but at least we have that mm -hmm. background knowledge. So what do you do on like the structured days at work? Like you said, you're in the office two to three days. Like how does that differ from your days when you're running around? Do you do meal prep? But, do you yeah. do things? For sure. Days I'm in the office, like for instance, tomorrow um, I'm in the office and I'm in there quite early. So usually I will do, a little bit of meal prepping and I'm very basic with it. You know, it's just me I'm cooking for. So I, I don't really care, man. I just, you know, I, and I like food to taste good, but it's, I'm easy to please. So I, yeah. I just, whatever's going to be quick and like easy to prepare. That's, that's my jam. <laughs> so, yeah. Amen to that brother. <laughs> yeah, man. So like days in the office, I try to bring in food. Um, and uh, so I'll usually, you know, meal prep, like some chicken, salmon, some kind of protein, some rice with it, some broccoli or some kind of green. Cause I just like to have something green on my plate. Yeah. Um, and I'll throw some snacks in there. Um, and the mornings, my, my breakfasts are pretty, um, pretty quick and simple just cause I'm, I'm getting out of the house pretty early and I'm not a morning person. So <laughs> like, I, I, whatever I can go grab in like two minutes is but like your kids. eyes are half open like <laughs> yeah exactly I rolled out of bed I got dressed I rocked downstairs grabbed my stuff and I'm out there. like that's literally yeah. I'm trying to get better at that but um so what's a uh, quick breakfast that you'll make or that you'll grab on the go because I literally like just shared mine on Instagram which I'll chat about yeah. after this but like what like what will you grab I love um so I, we have Costco over here which um I don't know if you have something, something similar over there, but we have Costco and I will get a bunch of stuff there um, for my meal preps. They have a lot of great stuff there. That's like um, made already or easy to make whatever. Um, and they have these egg bites man, that are, this is my jam recently, by the way, this is egg, like more recent thing. Egg bites. Egg bites. Yeah. So it's like, right. cook them in a, it's like a, almost like an egg. Um, how would you say it? Uh, like a like an egg muffin or something like that but they cook it in a certain way sous vide 
so it's like a certain style. Anyways, they throw like spinach and bell peppers and a little bit of cheese and um, egg whites in it. So it's it's actually like relatively um, light as far as calories, higher in protein. Um, and there's so like in a package, it'll be about like 20 grams of protein for that. And then I'll also have like a just a quick protein shake or smoothie in the morning. Um, something I can grab on the go, usually, and coffee, obviously. Oh, so you'll grab that like <laughs> whilst you're driving to work or you'll grab it from the Either, fridge? Either, yeah. Or... I usually have them in the fridge. I'll grab that stuff, um, you know, warm it up real quick. And I, maybe I'll eat it here or maybe I'll eat it on the go. But um, I, and I typically the, like I, I'll either make the protein shake here or sometimes I'll buy like those little pre-made ones, you know, they have those uh, and I'll take it with me and then maybe drink that when I'm at the office, you know? Yeah. Um, so like, it's just, most of the time, it's just whatever I can get the most amount of protein in the morning and a shorter amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think that's a big tip as well. Like having a big hit of protein in the yeah. morning. Like I'm a big fan of that because like for this main reason, like when you're high in protein for, for breakfast, so number one, actually, actually, there's a few points. So let me backtrack a bit. But, but like number one, if you have high protein in the morning, protein is like the most satiating macronutrient. So it ties you over to lunch quite well. Like I find that I don't really have to snack. If I have a, and I'm not a big snacker anyway, but like if I have quite a big hit of protein in the morning, which I have done habitually for a while, I don't yeah. tend to eat anything before lunch. I'll just like hold off until lunch because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty full. But also if you hit your protein quite high in the morning it saves you scrambling around later at night time when you've like run out of carbs and fats and you've just have like protein left because like the worst thing and i've been in this situation a lot i think is like coming home and like you have to have like heaps of protein so you have like this chicken breast or whatever piece of salmon like you said or a steak whatever and then like you have no calories left so you just have like some spinach with it or like some greens or something like like to end the day like that for me is like the worst like the worst day possible right, so like right. so what i like to do is like really jack up protein for breakfast like i have a smoothie or i used to have yogurt bowls quite a lot and then for for lunch i i'll just usually have like tuna and rice like real simple and like a packet of frozen vegetables to make it colorful and then like later on for dinner i only have to have like 20 grams of protein or 30 grams of protein, which is like a piece of meat or whatever. And then, and then I have heaps of carbs and fats left. So I try and kind of hold them off because carbs and fats for dinner is like the best feeling. Like, you know, like last night I had pasta with like melted yeah. cheese through it, yeah. and, it and like cut oh. up steak. And I was like, oh, like I was just thinking like, and literally talking about it now, I was like, this is the best way to end the day. Like with like For heavy sure. carbs, like not, trying to hold off on cheese like because it's fat and all that kind of stuff like just like ending the meal with a real nice like feeling of being full and being like yeah you know like on the couch like oh this feels good that's something i learned from you honestly is um stacking up your your protein earlier on in the day um and because i'm right there with you man i i love good food i love um I love pasta and cheese and like, you know, all that, all that good stuff, man. And I also am a, I'm a big dessert guy. You know, I have a huge sweet tooth and I don't know what it is, but I've always been this way, man. I eat something and I'm always craving something like just it's like, like a little it's not, sweet. It's not finished yet. The fight's not it's finished. It's not done, dude. Unless you can just like, like I cannot sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not over. So I I'm with you, man. It's nice to be able to, um bank your calories almost basically bank your your um and get your your protein loaded in and and you're right it's the worst thing for me and it still happens um less now than it used to but it still happens where um i'll get home and i'm like dude i gotta get like 80 to 100 of protein <laughs> yeah. before I you're like like eating this like how, dry dude? chicken breast yeah it's um, not a good and feeling by the way i have like 20 carbs left and i have like 10 grams of fat like how is that going to work you know and so that's the position that I don't want to be in. So yeah, it's really just being more methodical, right? What, yeah. what things can I do and, to, and, to get that in the way? And it's actually not a huge sacrifice. Like, cause like what I like to think is like, when you're having breakfast, you're pretty hungry anyway. Like you haven't eaten for however long you've slept. It could be six hours, could be eight, could be 10. So you're usually pretty hungry. So what I like to think is like, you use that hunger drive to almost eat the things that you're probably the least excited about, like, which is protein. Like, pro like if you had a chance of eating carbohydrates, 
fat or protein. Like if you're like thinking health and fitness, you'll probably take protein. But if you're not, if you're thinking like, I just want to like, you know, you'll think carbs or fats because it tastes better. So like, I like to use that hunger drive that you wake up with to eat like high protein because it's probably something you won't do when you're like less hungry. So, so later on, like during the day when you're chilling and it's like end of the day, you want to finish it with a nice thing. It's like nice to have your like protein looked after and just have your carbs and fats. So with your like, sweet tooth how do you do that with fitness because like you know i talk about ice cream a lot that's like that's my jam i like to save some calories for that for example last night i had like a bowl of ice cream and it was like the no sugar added peter's one i was like you know trying to be better with it calorie wise um but then again i had like a huge active day like twenty thousand steps and i went to the gym too so like i like got like a big scoop of peanut butter with the spoon and just put it in my ice cream and I was, <laughs> and I mixed it up and then I put like coconut flakes in it. So it was like vanilla ice cream with like peanut butter and coconut flakes. And it was like, you know, like I said, like one of the best ways to end the day. So like, how do you, yeah. you know, have dessert or wrap up your, your days of eating? Well, it's a dangerous game, Brock. Let me tell you, it's a, it's a fine line. No, but honestly, okay. So let, first of all, let me just say like, when I first started seeing your stories where you're posting this freaking yogurt bowl, but you have like chocolate and protein or like chocolate and like peanut butter and honey and all this stuff in there. And I'm like, what? Like, how does he manage to, you know, it kind of blew my mind. And then you started talking about like, you know, the ways that you're able to accomplish that and bank it like we're talking about now. And it just really kind of rearranged the way I was thinking. Cause I always thought, like, okay, if you really want to be like lean and stay lean, you really got to sacrifice like mm. these foods. And it was like an all or nothing thing. Yeah. Like, so most quickly, of the time. Yeah. Sorry. Quickly, just to jump in there. Sometimes that is what it takes, you know, like yeah. I've been training yeah, for yeah, 14 for sure. years. So like, you know, I'm always pretty clear on that. Like I have a lot of calories. I train a lot. I'm a tall dude. You know, I, I yeah. weigh like 90 kilos, which I don't know how many pounds, maybe it's 200 pounds. I'm not sure. But like, yeah, I've been doing it for a while. So like when I started out, I wasn't eating ice cream bowls and all that kind of stuff. Like it took a while to get there. But yeah, but, yeah. but carry on. Yeah, carry on. Man. No, no. And to your point, it's not like it's different for everybody and how and they, it all factors in, like you're saying, like your level of activity, how many calories you can take in all day, like that all has to factor in. Mm. But what kind of stuck in my mind was, okay, I can still have those foods as long as I'm banking it in my you know, with my, my uh, macros for that day. If I'm, if I'm planning for it, if I, if I save a little bit at the end, like I know I can, I have like two or 300 calories left, but little tools that I use, man, is like, I just try to find, um, for me, I have a sweet tooth. So I'll try to find things that are substitutes that are still good, Mm. that maybe less calories, you know? And nowadays it's like, seems like there's more and more things out there that you can get. Like there's like ice cream bars that you can get, um, at, Again, Costco, my favorite place. Or, you know, different grocery stores Sponsor. where you can find Sponsor them. Us. <laughs> <laughs> this, this podcast has been sponsored by... By no. Costco. <laughs> but um, for real, like, I, I'll find stuff. And um, I'm, honestly, bro, it's like I'm on TikTok and people are posting like, oh, I found these. And I'm like, whoa. So I'll get yeah. like an ice cream bar or something that's like um, 100 calories, 150 calories. And that, that satiates my like sweet tooth without really killing my, my diet or my macros mm. or, you know, it's just really about like moderation, honestly, some stuff I won't buy because I just know I have no self-control. <laughs> oh yeah. Get, no, for real. I can't get Oreos, man. I'm no good with those, bro. I'll, I'll like, <laughs> I'll eat a whole sleeve of those, man. That's my fat kid just comes out and it's over. <laughs> so there's certain things I just can't do, bro. But I love that um, I can still have ice cream or like, you know, it's not going to kill, it's not going to kill my diet. And if you're looking at it from not just that day, but from that week or, you know, that month or whatever, you know, you're looking at an overall perspective. One day where you might have something like you're out with friends and you go to out to dinner and they have dessert and stuff and you have a little bit of dessert, it's not going to kill it. You know, it's mm. just weighing it into your, it's like all this stuff that I've learned from, working with you is, is how to plan that in to your lifestyle and to your week, you know, looking at it from a macro perspective, like not the term macronutrients, but like a yeah. macro looking at it from a bigger perspective 
um, versus hyper focused on just that what's in front of you, you know? Yeah. But little, if you want to know little things that I'd like to do, man, I love what, like I started doing yogurt bowls. I never, I never did that before. Um, like I would, if I got yogurt, it was like the fruit kind with loads of sugar in it, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, Same then, man. Yeah. Well, like, that's what you start with. Like as a kid, like I like, would take oh, them. Healthy. It's yogurt, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I used to think yogurt was like, yeah, like sweet. Like I like I remember, yeah, growing up, like, you know, mum would put a little like like so like so when we went shopping we'd get the six pack, you know, and we'd like break one off and take one to to school. That was like, you know, I used to, yeah, the fruity ones and stuff, you get like strawberry ones and all and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like you're not like you're not thinking about the protein, it just tastes good. Or, yeah. or I remember there was these ones, I think they were called yogo, it was like a, like a gorilla on it and like, you know, there'd be like chocolate or chocolate caramel and stuff. Yeah. So like as soon as I found out like, oh, like yogurt's like high in protein, like it can actually be pretty good for you. Like in terms yeah. of like hitting protein and it tastes pretty good. Like, like, yeah, that was a game changer. For sure. Like, so getting the, the non-fat yogurt and then you just throw stuff in there you like, you know, like a little 100%. bit of peanut butter, a little bit of Nutella, maybe, you know, your favorite protein or something and just mix it in there. And yeah. that honestly was what, like, especially when I was cutting, cutting like lowest calories, if I had any calories at the end of the day and I needed a, like a little bit more protein or something, and that was, that would be like my, before I go to bed snack thing. And that was what saved me a lot of times. Cause it's still filling and it gives you that kind of sweet tooth. Yeah. I, yeah. Fulfillment. I think that's, yeah. 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 That's where my yoga bowl started. It was like, you know, when I was cutting or when I was on lower calories, like trying to fit in something sweet because it's, it's, it's quite hard when you're cutting, you know, you can't just crack open a tub of Ben and Jerry's and, you know, go to town. Like you have to, like, you know, you have 200 right. calories to work with. So you're like, okay, I'll yeah. have some yogurt and a bit of protein and some strawberries and some, you know, raspberries. Like it starts like that. But then when yeah. you have like, you know, more calories later on and stuff like that. And, and, and like, especially for breakfast, I'd be like, yeah, just throwing all this kind of stuff in. Like, I remember at Easter yeah. time, I was like, oh, man, I'm just going to put an Easter egg in my, in my yogurt bowl. Like, you know, so I was just like, bang, you know, it's like, <laughs> whatever, man. I was like, you know, like it's, yeah, you can right. put anything in it. And I think that's the beauty of flexible dieting. You know, you can literally just like have whatever you want. And then, you know, like it kind of depends. I, and then I could just deal with it later on. Like because I had a whole Easter egg for breakfast, I probably had like 1500 calories in that breakfast bowl. So I was like, oh, you know, I'd probably just have a smaller lunch and then, you know, carry on as per normal. Or, you, you, you know, like that's the beauty of it. It doesn't have to be super calculated. But like a couple of things on what you touched on before, like the whole like, your mind was blown when you thought you could have like ice cream when you're dieting or put things in your yoga bowl. Like that was like a big switch for me too. Cause like when I first started out in fitness, this was before I was a personal trainer or before anything, I was reading interviews on different websites and reading articles and all these fitness models and stuff. They never talked about having ice cream or stuff like that. And if they did, it was a cheat meal. And that's like those two words together are just like my worst nightmare. Like I, like I hate it. Like, like I, man, I had a question on, um, on Instagram the other day, like, Oh, what do you have on the weekend for cheat meals? And I was like, I sound like a broken record, but I'm like, you don't need to have a cheat meal. Like it can just be a yeah. normal meal that is high in calories and you just get over it. Like you don't, it's not a cheat meal. Like this whole cheat, like as soon as you say cheat, it sounds bad, you know, like it's just the whole terminology yeah. is like, you're doing bad things against your diet. But like, if, like, if you want to talk about it like that, then I have a cheat meal every day. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we have yeah, ice exactly. cream like almost every night. Like that word is just like detrimental. So like knowing that- It really kills you know, people's like their will, you know, when they, you know, they think I can only have one meal. That, you know, and that's like, they're it's like a carrot on a stick, you know, the whole yeah. thing. And like some people are like, oh, you know, that- is my motivation to stay healthy, like to have that cheat meal. But then, you know, which is fine if it works for some people, it's just not how I like to roll and like how I like to coach my clients because it's real, it's really uneducated. Like, you know, yeah. like, like it's just like, oh yeah, I'll just have a big cheat meal on Sunday. And it's like, well, if you're trying to lose fat and you've been good this whole five or six days or whatever, and then you just have this massive cheat meal and let's say it's 3000 calories because you just go to town and have burgers and pizza and drink alcohol, all that kind of stuff. If you do that and then you like don't lose weight, it's like, well, then you think, well, why did that happen? Was it the cheat meal or was it because you didn't create a deficit, a great enough deficit during the week? Was it because I didn't walk enough? Was it because like you don't have yeah. enough like knowledge of what's going on? But at least if you're tracking things or you're aware 
aware of it and eating the foods that you like a it's more sustainable but b you actually have the data to to make change if you need to but with a cheat meal which often you know like you said is really negative and then they have it and then they feel really bad and then they just have a whole cheat day like it's like you know like that's when it's like really out of control and that's where i don't like that strategy because i think it's disempowering like it leaves you not knowing where at least with flexible dieting you're completely aware of the decisions you're making yeah exactly and i think that's what kind of really got me um honestly that was really what kind of got me interested in, in following you and, and and you got my attention is because i wasn't the things that you were saying i wasn't hearing anywhere else or seeing anywhere else um, uh, in the fitness industry, social media kind of realm, if you will. Um, you know, because there's so much just, I think we talked about this before. There's just so much stuff out there, bull, bull crap out there. You have to like, like sift through to figure out what's real, you know, and so hard, it, it's hard, but I, what I, what I love about what you do, Brock, man, is like, you just make it very, uh, practical, easy for people to understand that, Hey, like it's, it's not that, it's not that complicated, you know, um, <laughs> you know, you're really, you know, you don't have to do this specific guy's diet or like, you know, um, you know, Chris Hemsworth Thor, you know, like, yeah, what he did uh, to be Thor, you know, or, yeah, or stuff or the, like that. You yeah. Know? Wolverine or the rock. Yeah. Like yeah. it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's hard. It's, especially when you're like new to the fitness thing, like say like, you know, when you first discovered me, and you're and, and you're new like if i was just saying all this kind of stuff like you know you have to eat like this you have to eat blueberries because if you don't you're gonna die you know or <laughs> you know if you if you eat steak <laughs> it's, it's gonna explode in your liver like you know like if you have no idea you might go whoa this guy knows what he's talking about you know like he's got a six-pack he definitely knows what he's saying and you, right. and like you have like no education like that's the danger of social media at the moment like I saw this video the other day and I won't even say his username because I don't want to bring any attention to his page, but he's like saying like T is bullshit. T is killing you. And like saying all the stuff. And I was like, T like really? T man. <laughs> like, are you serious? Like even so like his theory was like, you know, like plants um, release like damaging toxins when they're getting eaten because that's their like defense mechanism. Right even then you're not eating the leaves you're having tea like it's like mostly water and like a small like and tea mate there's like millions of people that are drinking tea um you know people like from india from sri lanka yeah, that have yeah. been like consuming it for a while like their population <laughs> seems very fine and like you see this, years, maybe. <laughs> yeah, man like you see this guy who's like you know he has a six pack and he's talking very confidently so you so you're watching you go whoa this guy must know what he's talking about and then he's cherry picking some research and saying, you know, this is blah, 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 blah. And then like, if you have no idea, like you could just be like, man, tea's bad for you. And then, and, and it starts from there. And then you tell your friends, stop drinking tea. Tea's bullshit. Watch this video, this guy, knows, you know, and then it just starts from there. Yeah. So like, that's why it's like my mission to just be like, yeah, you know, like you said, try and make it really practical, make it really simple. But the thing is like, like, so my theory is like your best diet that you need to follow is actually not that far away from the diet that you're already following. You know, like it's, it's very close. It might just be smaller portions. It might just be an extra serving of fruit and vegetables. You know, it might just be yeah. one less meal. Like there's these small changes that are very discreet that would make a massive impact in your life and like your results and all that kind of stuff. Cause the diet that you follow and the diet that all my other clients follow, they're not crazy extreme. They're not like, you cannot eat this. If right. like you cannot eat sugar. Cause if you eat sugar, it's going to turn to fat and you're going to get fat and then, you know, you're going to be terrible and all this kind of stuff. It's not like that, but it seems too simple and too practical that it's not, it's not going to be effective. Cause like everyone's saying like yeah. tea's bullshit. So it's like very extreme. Like, Whoa, yeah. you don't touch tea. Like I feel like I'm doing something drastic. So I'm going to get drastic results. But really in my opinion, it's the small things that make the huge changes. You're so right, man. Um, like for me, my fitness journey started, it's been a long process I feel like um and so like I feel like maybe I'm more familiar with what is by now I'm more familiar with what is actually more accurate and and you know um realistic um but yeah for people that don't know any better all they do is they see people these influencers saying the stuff and they trust it based upon 
well, it must have worked for them. But um, I think what people don't understand, and I think what I learned um, the most from you is that like, it really is much simpler than we try to make it at the end of the day. Like, we think it has to be this big thing, this big, this crazy diet that we go on or this drastic change. And like you were saying, it's really not. It's small changes to your life that add up to bigger results. Like, and I think that applies to so many other areas of your life, um, which is awesome. I think that it's bled into other areas of my life, not just fitness. And we can get into that at you know some point if you want. Um, but I, I really have become almost like a disciple. Uh, <laughs> like, like I'm preaching the gospel. Spread the word, man. Culture. Spread the word. <laughs> Convert, Honestly, man. convert everyone, man. <laughs> I'm trying, man. Like a friend of mine recently started to really get serious about um, losing some weight. And he's been lifting weights and stuff. And he yeah. had, you know, moments when he was really like into bodybuilding. He was really cut and stuff. And then he, you know, so he's gone through different. But, um, you know, I, I kind of really was just trying to tell him, like, it's really simple, man. You just honestly, you, you got to get into a calorie deficit you know, and increase your activity. You know, I was like, get a Fitbit. He's like, yeah. get a get a watch or something that tracks your steps. You know, yeah, there you go. And he did it to his credit. And I was like, you know, just track how many steps you're getting in man, and aim, you know, for now, just aim for 10,000. That's more than, and, uh, and he lost like 30 something pounds um, over a shorter period of time. So, um, you know, these, these principles that you apply, like I think people try to make everything really complex and complicated that it's unachievable. It's really not. It's, you know, all right, figure out, you know, what, what it takes for you to make, like, what's your maintenance at or what, you know, what is your, your base level go from there, figure out what the deficit is going to be. And then just get into that deficit and stay in it. You know, I think I, what I loved about our training together was, you know, you applied that um priority theory you know so like if you're looking at the mat just the nutrients the macros you know stay under your cal- stay within your calories first and foremost number then, one yeah number one then you know two like or you know one a i guess would be uh hitting your protein goal because we were trying to maintain i was trying to maintain muscle or even build if i could while cutting which is crazy hard but um and then the other ones after that, you know, your, your fats and carbs and, and whatnot. But, you know, that made it a lot easier for me because I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, it's not, it's not this daunting task. It's okay. Let me first focus on just staying with my calories. And then I started to like, okay, let me hit my protein goal every day. Let me just focus on that. And then I really started dialing in the other ones because it was easier because, you know, I, I figured the other steps first, you know. Yeah, these little steps that start to add together is what it is, you know. Yeah, and that's like such a practical way of looking at it too, which, like, I I, I think appeals to people that don't look for the quick fix. But I think you have to get into that mentality first, because a lot of people are looking for that quick fix, which is why people fall for the whole, you know, all these people saying tea's bullshit, and they go, okay, you know, well then what is the solution? Oh, here it is. You have to buy it for five hundred bucks. Oh, okay, you know, and then <laughs> and then they buy it, and it's like, oh, well that quick fix didn't work. But like once you develop yeah. this kind of, you know, like you're saying, your your perspectives changed around fitness. You kind of have a bit more understanding of what bullshit might be and what bullshit might not be, you know, and what actually makes sense. Like, but that's such a practical way of looking at it. Like, you know, your protein matters first. Like, it's called like I guess if you want to call it the hierarchy of importance. Um, like what Jordan's referring to and like there's a video I have educational video but I was you know I'll just kind of run through it quickly like where at the bottom of the pyramid the thing that matters the most in terms of body composition or body transformation is like the amount of calories that you consume calories in versus calories out and this is where you know I really am pro calories in versus calories out where if you burn more calories than you consume then you're going to lose weight because you're in a calorie deficit. If you consume more calories than you burn, you're going to be in a calorie surplus, which is going to make you gain weight. And if they balance each other out, then you're at maintenance, you're at homeostasis. So that's like the most important thing you have to focus on. And once you understand that, then you can worry about other things that are less important, but still important, but lesser to how many calories you're consuming. So there's your protein, there's your fats, there's your carbs. And then as you keep going, you have things like meal timing, 
supplements, sleep, you know, which are all also important. But when you look at the bigger scheme of things, you know, calories are the most thing because if you get great sleep and you take creatine and you take your pre-workout, so you're training really hard and you know, you're having fish oil twice a day and all this kind of stuff and you're taking the right supplements, you're sleeping well and you're training hard and you're trying to lose weight, but then you just stuff it up by just eating too many calories. It doesn't matter how much you sleep. Like you can sleep 14 hours and you're still not <laughs> like, you're still not going <laughs> to lose weight. <laughs> like it's like, yeah, you know, and once you have this like, awareness like it's kind of like tracking calories where you develop that nutritional awareness yeah. like once you have that educational uh foundation of this awareness that calories are the things that matter most and then the other stuff on top then it can really be actually empowering and you know like you said give you confidence to actually lock down and focus on the things that matter because or else you're focusing on things that don't matter for example like people looking for supplements you know and going you know, yeah. this is going to fix it. But then when you look at that pyramid, it's right at the top, which is like one to 5% that doesn't really matter. But people are spending their, all their energy. It's like their pyramids flipped upside down and they're focusing on the yeah. wrong things. And then, you know, they're like, they're screwed. You know, they're just eating too much and taking these supplements and then supplements don't work. And then fitness doesn't work. And then they end up giving up. You know, that's why I wanted to have this important conversation with you. Like, to break down the barrier to entry of fitness. Like you don't have to yeah. know that much or be a special person that is always fit and always positive and, you know, fitness person, like you don't have to, like your goals and your mindset and your lifestyle that you need to live to achieve them are very close to what you're doing now. You just need to make small changes. So with your yeah, cool. transformation journey, like where did you start? Like, I guess, what was the straw on the camel's back that's like, okay, I'm going to start training or I'm going to start eating a bit better. Like, when did it, like, when did you decide that? And like, what things did you first do? Because I'm sure you made a few mistakes on the way, like I did. And like most people do when they're getting into fitness, you know? Yeah. So it's interesting you say that, man, because my kind of journey so far ties directly to what you were just saying. Like, um, you know, I, when I was younger, I was like a heavier kid, you know? Um, I was a chubby kid, if you will, uh, which people see me now, they would never, they never believe me when I say that, but you know, um, that's where it was. And then I, so believe it or not, I went to like my checkup or whatever, and the doctor was like, yeah, you're, you know, you're obese. And I was like, what? <laughs> and how old were you? And how old were like you at 12. this time? 12. I was 12, man. Yeah, which was crazy. Um, I, I kind of knew, but until he said it to me, like mm -hmm. a doctor said it to me, I was like, oh, this is serious. So even at like 12, 13 years old, my mom was just talking to me about this the other day. And she was like, yeah, it was kind of crazy. Like you had this little food journal and like you were really like conscious of what you were eating. I uh, go to the, like, my, we went through a drive through McDonald's. I'd order like a hamburger, no cheese, no nothing on it, like a Diet Coke. Like I was just really conscious of what I was you know, and that's where it kind of started for me. But over the years, you know, I kind of just was trying to figure it out. You know, um, I tried different things um, and, you know, was just trying to figure out like what's what works, you know. Um, like, for instance, I when I was going to college, I had um, I worked at a I worked at the campus gym there. So I would work out like almost every day I think for a time yeah, okay. working out every day playing basketball like three or four times a week but I was never like lean I was probably slimmed down but I was never lean you know um I was like that skinny fat kind of you know <laughs> right like in between and yeah yeah and I was like man I'm, I'm doing like two or three hours of cardio here why am I not like <laughs> six pack already right yeah. that's where my mind was at like the more cardio you do um you the, the leaner you get um which is not wrong but it's not a direct correlation necessarily and so what i wasn't calculating was how much food i was eating or whatever you know like what kinds of foods i was eating and all that stuff at that time it wasn't really on my radar i was just just focused on that exercise aspect of it and you know i started working with a trainer there you know and teaching me how to do like um, so this is at know, the college lift. campus gym? The college. Still? Yeah. 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 He was, you know, so they, he taught me a lot of good stuff about like how to squat, how to deadlift, uh, do all that stuff. But even he at the time, like you were saying the other day, you know, I was a big no knees over toes guy. Yeah. That was him too. You know, he was the 
power lifter, you know? And so it was like, he's like, bro, you don't need to do all this stuff. You just need to do like deadlift. Just bench and just deadlift and just, just squat. Dead, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all you squat, need, the big three. He's like, bro, you don't need to do all that stuff, those, all those influencers, whatever, dude. And I was like, but I want to like be cut. And he's like, no, 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 you just need to, bro, you'll get cut. You just do all this stuff, you know? I was like, <laughs> okay, you know? I think what, fast forwarding though a little bit, you know, because I tried all the different, um, I tried different like, bodybuilding.com so-and-so is like program you know and i would yeah oh i did that tons to... man i was doing like yeah, jeff's, dude. <laughs> uh, jeff seeds program or jeff side however you want to say it like or steve cook or whatever yeah you know? ulysses yeah. lazar angelov i was yeah. like doing all of them man i was like what are they doing yeah. they look great and i'm trying to follow like their meal programs and stuff it's you know? so I'm hard to like eight it's meals really a day hard. when you're like in high school it just doesn't work at college you know and, and like i couldn't bring like all these Tupperware. You know? yeah, like, I've only got a backpack. Gonna, and, you know, I was like still in school working, you know, I was also music minor at the time, business major. So I was still actually involved in music there. So I was not only doing my core studies, but I was like practicing for like the music stuff, jazz and all that. Yeah. There was a lot of, just didn't have a lot of time for all that stuff. And I, so, and coincidentally, I just would fall off the, the track you know yeah but and, and, and that's also the thing like with these fitness models that we would research like they do that full time so they have a lot of time to say cook the meals that they need to cook or carry them around and you know like they're doing that full time but you as like a person studying doing a major and doing a minor and you know trying to yeah. balance life and train and figure stuff out like you know it's just not practical it's not so fast forwarding to like 2020 I think is when I like found you on Instagram um, I don't remember if it was like pre like COVID or like I right during remember. COVID but I but, but I know that you trained with gym access so it, it may have been before because yeah. you were training at the gym when we first started I think it was it was yeah so, so at it least you weren't before. in lockdown yeah maybe slightly before but I know that I found your page around that time and I was following you for a while. And then as with most people, I think what kind of the straw that broke the hammer, back, the camel's back, so to speak, was just, I uh, went through like a tough like breakup during that time. And um, so finally I was just kind of like, you know what, like what I'm doing, I was still working out all the time. I never stopped working out, but yeah. I wasn't seeing the results that I was looking for. Mm. and I probably looked decent but I wasn't like as lean as I wanted to be or anything like that so I think that uh, finally I was like I need to do something I need to change something and I had watched your page for a while so I trusted um, the information and I saw the results of the people that you uh, worked with and I, I kind of knew your approach to it and I was like this guy knows what he's talking about he knows what he's doing so I was like let me give this a try and so that's when I first kind of started working with you and I think you know as you always ask like what's your tell me a little bit about what your goal is what you want describe what you're looking for you know and I don't even know if I was super specific I think I might have given you like a body fat percentage or something I was looking for I but I never it. I've never measured it yeah. yeah I only I anyways I knew I was like um somewhere in the teens and I was like let me shoot for 10 percent you know and the first go around like we did pretty good you know um and then i think maybe six months a year later i i was my second time going one-on-one -on -one with you and that's when i feel like we really i really was able to hit and achieve like my best fitness so far you know yeah and i really i think that's when i really stuck with everything and committed to everything 100 percent. yeah i was just going to say that like i think you're like definitely as your coach seeing you progress through those eight week coaching programs your second time you were definitely more compliant in terms of you know yeah. i don't know what that was you know maybe it was your state of mind or you know maybe it was you just being around more fitness or being more aware of my theories and how i think yeah. and the strategies but yeah you really nailed it like because you were on some pretty low calories that that you have to yeah. have a lot of discipline with, you know, like you definitely weren't having ice cream every night, <laughs> you know, you weren't doing the whole flexible life. And that's where you yeah. had to be a bit more choosy about your calories. You know, that's probably when right. you're having Greek yogurt for dessert as opposed to Ben and Jerry's, but there's certain times that call for certain things, but your compliance level was really good. And I think that's what people 
misunderstand about like getting the six pack or getting the the dream body or you know supposedly what people say they want is like it's actually really hard work and that's one thing i'm never really shy to talk about is like man like you need to really give it like especially when you haven't been there before and it sounds like pretty obvious but like you have to do things you haven't done to achieve something you haven't achieved yeah <laughs> yeah like, 100 yeah. percent. like you never really dieted down to 1600 calories before like and who does yeah. like some people will have that in one meal and be like why am i not this physique that i want because like you know you had a full-on six-pack you were shredded you know your arms are huge you know you're doing like really great lifts you were getting i remember your second eight weeks like um, in your first eight weeks, it still occurred, but it was very prominent in the second eight week program you were doing. Like you were getting stronger too. And it's like, you're getting stronger right. on 1600 calories. Like what? Like you were really pushing it. Like you were digging deep. Like you were really focused. You were diligent. You were hardworking. And that's what like took you to that level that you achieved and that you could still yeah. achieve again if you put in that same work. But it's a, a, it's a different level of work, you know, to be like super strong, 10% body fat. Like you're working hard in the gym. You're working hard on your nutrition. You, you're trying to sleep as much as possible as well because you because you want to feel fresh and 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 you want to perform your best and train as hard as you can and like you're also trying to get your steps in. Like there's all this kind of stuff that's going on, topped off with you're working, you're doing your you know. So as much as you know, we're trying to bring down the barrier to entry to fitness to get started. It's very easy, but to get to an an elite physique that you want to achieve is also very tricky. So it's like this balance, like to get started, anyone can do it. Like I swear, all you have to do is some small things, but as you yeah. progress and get more advanced and want to achieve these kind of bigger and more, more advanced goals, you have to put in that work level that's proportionate to those goals. Absolutely. Yeah, man, that's, it's spot on, man. Like what you're saying is, you know, and you can remember probably like at some point during that, eight to 16 weeks that we were doing that I was getting frustrated because I was like man I'm not progressing yeah you're like, you're I, like I didn't lose weight this week or like you gained yeah, weight yeah, yeah. or you know it was like I was like what's like, going on yeah like I've been Is sticking right? to it and I was yeah I remember having those talks like man you just gotta like write it out like you're doing everything yeah. you need to do and and that's the benefit of like you said looking at it from a macro perspective you know stepping out big picture if you step back and look at say four weeks of progress, you've still dropped a decent yeah. amount of weight, but maybe one week you didn't drop. Um, but it's just about continually showing up, being consistent. But when you look at day to day or week to week, you know, where certain things don't work out the way that you want them to work out, it can be super frustrating. And that's where people give up. But having that macro perspective can be like, well, if we look at it in the grand scheme of things, it's not that bad. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, for me, it was like, okay, I, I was, I don't know, I, more towards advanced lifter at that point. So progressions were going to be incremental. And yeah. I didn't realize that until I got into it. You know, I was like, I was looking for this huge jump, you know? Um, but, you know, you kind of helped me see like, no, man, like you've been doing this long enough. Like it's going to be smaller and smaller changes over time. Um, and I think that people have to understand that too. Like, especially if they've been working out for a while or something like as you go, it's you're not going to see as big jumps as you did in the beginning, you know, where you lose a bunch of weight or you put on a bunch of muscle because it's kind of like your body is, it gets adjusted every level that you get to, you know, and you have to kind of continually um, up the ante in one way or the other to get results and push, really be committed to the process. Um, yeah. But like, no matter how hard you push, sometimes it's still smaller increments. Like, I've been lifting for 14 right. years, you know, you've been lifting for, you know, at least a couple with me decently, like, you know, I'm sure yeah. you trained well before me, but like, I guess having a structured program and, you know, doing lifts and focusing on progressive overload, you've been training well for a while, Yeah. but like, we still struggle to see huge jumps. Like I'm not adding 10 kg plates on each side every week when I'm squatting, like, you know, I'm getting pumped yeah. up for a 1.25 kg plate. Like it's crazy how excited I get to put this like small plate <laughs> on my squats. I'm like, yes you know like yeah for they're sure. really for small sure. increments but like on the grand scheme of things like as the closer you get to the genetic potential of your physique like how strong you can be how great you can look and you know like it just gets harder and harder and harder and that can be motivating or it can be demotivating it it, it, it really depends which is why you know to to kind of jump to an to another point like it's important to have these goals of being 
performance based as opposed to just looking better all the time, like physique based yeah. or, or aesthetic based. Because if you just look at your aesthetics, sometimes they don't improve for six months because you're trying to build. So you look fatter in, in, in the mirror and you go far out, man. I just look fat. Like, or, or not fat. Like, Oh, you know, yeah. like, Oh, where'd my six pack though? Like I don't have it anymore. And it's like, well, it's, you have to think of that macro perspective again. You have to come back and go, well, right. when I choose to cut later on, my chest is going to be bigger or, you know, um, like that's if you're just looking at aesthetics, but if you're looking at other things like a strong squat, uh, you know, I know you're doing weighted tricep dips now, like how much weight can I do on the weighted tricep dips? Like when you look at that yeah. stuff, it gets a bit more exciting for you personally. And it also keeps you in the game. Cause if you just look in the mirror all the time, and I think this is what a ton of people do and they start getting worse because they've finished their cut and they've reached this physique. And then they're like, well, what do I do now? So they start now eating what? more. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like, oh, well, I've gained a kilo. And then they just scurry back into a calorie deficit because they're like, oh, this is weird. You know, I'm, I'm yeah, putting on yeah, weight yeah. or, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not looking like I was when I was shredded and had a six pack. So I need to go back to there. And I think that's how people get stuck in this calorie deficit forever. Like there's so many people that just like live in this calorie deficit, poverty calorie world. Right. And it's sad, man. Like you don't want to have like salads every meal for the rest of your life, like to be stuck on 1200 or 1500 or 1600 calories. And I think that's yeah. something that like, I'd love you to talk about and I won't keep you on too much longer. I know we're talking for a while, but yeah, like, don't worry. you know, you went from like 1600 calories to, to achieve the lean physique that you did at the, at the peak of our cut. And then you like started climbing, like your calories were much higher. So like, how was that process for you? Like, cause it's, it's, it's tough. Like, like when I first tried to do it coming off 1500 calories, you know, I was talking about when I was younger and I was like 1500 calories is the number. I got really lean, I weighed like super light and then I tried to increase my calories slowly but I would just end up binging and I would just end up, you know, going like, cause I was like, stuff it, you know, I'm either super calorie deficit guy or I'm like, stuff it, like eat whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how did you, you know, I'm either this guy or I'm that guy, like a monster. So like, yeah. how did you manage to, to get the balance between, you know, obviously you had a bit of my guidance sometimes, you know, um, but how did you, yeah, how did you deal with going from like 1600 calories, which is very low for you and very low for a dude in general? How did you go from there to, to higher calories and trying to get that mindset change as well? Well, I think part of it, man, is, and I'm still figuring it out, you know, yeah. like it's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process. Um, so, you know, kind of to go back to like when that period of time I was on 1600 calories, it was, it was tough for sure. It was tough, but your body adjusts, your body eventually adjusts and eventually 1600 calories. It's, you know, you, you still don't feel like you're eating a ton of food, but eventually it doesn't feel like you're necessarily starving either. Like your body adjusts to it. Mm. But like you said, it's, it's not a place you want to stay in. It's a season, right? It's just a short time um, that you need to be in that to achieve your result. Yeah. Um, and so people understand, like understanding like that, the goal is to eventually come out of that and, and reach a, like a maintenance phase, you know, and I can't tell you how excited I was to get back to maintenance phase, man. Um, and I think I did great with it for a while. Now, when I went to the holidays, you know, it was easy to kind of, I honestly, like once I stopped paying closer attention to, um, you know, my, uh, my calories, I probably started going over it a little bit again. And so now I've, I've learned, you know, like, okay, like I, I can in general know where I'm at, but I should still probably track it even when I'm in maintenance because we give ourselves a lot of slack, I think, to be honest. Like we're like, oh, I didn't eat that much today. But when we go man. back and look at it. Like I human eat, beings, I, I, yeah, <laughs> human beings are the worst. Like, like we are really bad at like guessing calories. Like if we yeah. leave it up to our like eyes and we like what we think we are eating is way 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 inaccurate we are not good at that yeah 100 percent. and i think part of it is finding the balance man like now it's kind of what you're saying earlier or we talked about this um like on our call recently about maybe your calories are this much but to maintain your level of leanness you have to increase your activity um you know for me i have a very sedentary kind of job and so when I'm calculating my maintenance calories, I always put in sedentary. I don't put in active, even though it can be kind of confusing. 
because it's like I well I go to the gym five six times a week you know yeah um I'm pretty active but you know the way that you explain it and and looking at your overall day and how much activity you have you know if you put it in that perspective well my job I'm sitting a lot I'm driving somewhere I'm sitting with appointments I'm you know sitting at my desk and I'm so it's important that I understand that and I have to make up for that lack of activity in work. And there's times when I really can't, I can't help it if I have to sit with a client for an hour or two hours, I'm driving to an appointment. I, you know, I'm sitting, like, what can I do? So something that helped me a lot was like, you're like, well, you know, think about the opportunities that you have to make up for it. For instance, if you're on the phone, go for a walk. Um, or, you know, when I'm at the office on lunch, what I started doing is going for a walk during my lunch. Like I'll eat my lunch and then go out and walk around my office and stuff. Um, doing things like that helps make up that activity and Massive. slowly increasing that can help you, you know, be able to eat a decent amount of calories, not feel like you're restrictive while you're in maintenance, but still maintain the progress that you made, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that's a big mistake people make. Like, and I, I, I still am, um, communicating this like with the built by Brock team members and, and, and even one-to-one clients and, 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 and talking about it on socials, like just because you train a lot, that doesn't really mean you're that active. Like when you look at your whole day and you're working out for an hour, but you're sitting for, for I don't know, 10 to 12 hours, like even more like when people get home, they sit down and watch TV. They're not really, you know, playing sport and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, you're pretty, like you're pretty sedentary, but it's, it's, it's nice for you to think, Oh, I'm very active because I'm training a lot. And yeah, I'm not taking that away. Like if you're still training five to six times a week and you're, and you're sedentary, like good on you for training, like keep doing that. But where you can get more bang for buck is yeah, your neat levels, your walking, like you're going for walks in the office, going for walks on phone calls. Like that's a big one, man. Like I, I now like, you know, when I have to edit videos or take phone calls or do certain things, I go for a walk as well because I'm like, do I sit down and edit videos? Because like, even though I'm a personal trainer, like being an online personal trainer is very different to being a face-to-face personal trainer, you know, like face-to-face I was racking up. I like, I remember, and this is no joke. Like I, at the point where I was, transitioning out from face to face to online personal training i would walk into the city from my old apartment which took me about 45 minutes but i was like <laughs> like like people would see me walking they're like it looks like you're running man <laughs> like i was like powering in because because like you i was trying to get as much sleep as possible i just get a coffee and like leave while i'm half asleep and i'd wake up literally while i was walking into the city to, <laughs> to, to do work um and I would walk up a hill and do all this stuff. Like I would walk about 6,000 steps into the city. And then with my clients, what I would do, because so, and, and for any personal trainers listening to this, or even just people that train in general, I would walk in rest periods. So like what I would do is, you know, we'd do our six reps of bench press, whatever. And then let's say they had 90 seconds rest between their chin ups. We'd get up and we'd like, I was always walking like with other personal trainers in my gym, they would look, very stationary. So I would get my client. I'll be like, good job, man. High five, whatever. We would walk for a minute, come back, do the chin ups, you know, rest 30 seconds, whatever. Cause there was 90 seconds. So we'd rest a little bit, do the chin ups, high five. Good job, man. Keep walking back to the bench, you know, or sometimes I'd send them for a walk while I'd change the weights. I'd say, good job, man. We're going to up the bench press five kilos each side. You go for a walk, go to the drinking fountain, get some water, come back. So they're getting steps in because because they're doing what you're doing. They're sitting on their ass all day because they have a yeah. sedentary job. But like, it's not their fault. They're not lazy people. They're trying to pay the bills and feed their family, man. Like, I don't blame them. You can't just tell your boss, I'm not working from nine to 10 because I'm going for a walk. <laughs> like, they're laughing. <laughs> you can't yeah. do that. So I was trying to get them to move as much as possible. So like, if you're a trainer, I highly recommend that. First of all, it makes you stand out as a personal trainer because people go, what's that guy doing? You know, instead of them just sitting down and talking about the weekend, which is cool, but you can talk about the weekend and walk with your client as well. But it also bumps up your physical activity as a personal trainer, but also like your client that's most likely trying to lose fat and trying to be physically active. It hits both goals. Like I found like that was such a lifesaver. So I would literally hit 10,000 steps at like 7 a.m. And I was like, wow, 
and like I'll, some big days I'll do like 10 clients. So every session I'm walking and then I train and then I'd walk back home. I remember getting like 38,000 steps one day and I was just like, whoa, man. I was like, I need to eat a lot because or else I'm going to like lose weight. <laughs> I, like when I was a personal trainer, my diet was not personal trainer. Like it was, it looked yeah. like I was like some morbidly obese dude, like, <laughs> or like eating challenge, <laughs> like Guinness world record breaking. Like on my breaks, I'd go into Guzman Gomez. I think you have Guzman Gomez over there. It's like burritos and stuff. Do you, is, do you have it or not? No, I've never heard of that, but I also live in California, so we have okay. all yeah, well, kinds of... It's kind of like, uh, what's, that, uh, what's that place that's Chipotle, really big? Maybe? Yeah, Chipotle, yeah. Uh, I had that in Chicago. Really good. Um, so, yeah, so like that, like I would have two of the large burritos, you know, sour cream, cheese, the goods, like just for breakfast. Cheese, bro. <laughs> and then, yeah, and I'd get fries, and then I'd like, I'd eat whatever I could in between my breaks, like burgers and stuff. And then I'd get, it sounds really bad, man. But like, if I didn't eat these calorically dense foods, I'd literally lose weight because 40,000 steps and training, like that's crazy. Like your activity levels. So I'd get home, I'd eat like a whole tub of Ben and Jerry's and I'd just yeah. like be maintaining weight. But like physical activity is such an underrated marker. So like if you're sedentary all day, but you're training, you're, you're active for an hour, but you're sitting on your ass. Like it's, like, you know, and that's the right. education that really matters because it feels like you're physically active when you really ex like exert yourself in a session, you know, it feels like you're like, whoa, but yeah. So I, I, I guess I was just saying that because like, it's, it's such a, like neat levels are such an important thing going for walks, really underrated things that like, once yeah. again, it's not extreme. You're not doing a hundred pushups every minute. You're not doing backflips, you know, you're not sprinting up a hill with your shirt off or you, you know, you're not doing like these extreme things. You're just like yeah. going for a walk when you can, like people look at you just go, Oh, he just goes for walks. But like these small little habits that you are doing are paying off and like helping you get to your physique or your, you know, fitness level that you want to. I think that, that unlocked a big uh, piece of the puzzle for me um, in, in fitness in general. It's just like, I always had this idea that like, oh, if, if you want to be like super lean all year round, you have to like do more running or, you know, stuff like that. And um, I hate running. Hey, <laughs> join the club. Uh, I, you know what? I think everyone who tells the truth in the world hates running. I think people that say they like yeah. running, they're just liars, man. <laughs> and I, they're, yeah, exactly. They're just lying about it, man. Nobody <laughs> loves that. But it's like, what, I mean, nothing against it. I think if that's, if your goals are aligned, with like uh, uh like you were saying performance aligned with running and stuff which i i've kind of been thinking about myself but um for me that you know the fact that i could like you know increase my activity i could lose weight without doing any like running i'm like you know yeah. well, mind blown yeah um and so that really really helped me and honestly it's something that i have really tried to tell everyone else that you know that you know wants to know i'm just like honestly i didn't do any cardio so to speak of yeah. during my cut i just started walking like you know i i never really did this before but i would go you know i live in my you know um nice little neighborhood's not bad you know so i would just go for a walk even if it was at night i'd already been to the gym or whatever get home i'm like all right i still need to get my steps so i would go for a nice hour long walk or something and get the rest of my steps in and Honestly, for me, it was a good time because that I could use that time to do something that was also productive, um, like listening to books, audio books, mm -hmm. things like that, that are challenging me and educating me in other ways, um, you know, in addition to getting my exercise in. And it made the time go like fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah, I think that's like a, a thing to like add into the reason why it's a great idea is like listening to audiobooks because uh, I do the same if yeah. I have the time like I'll listen to audiobooks or another thing I will do is like call my grandma I'd call my dad yeah. I'd call my brother that lives in New Zealand I'll call my you know my sister-in-law like I'll just call people I'll, like, yeah now I'll call my wife's family and see how they're doing like because when you're working you're busy and stuff like you don't have time to do that so yeah. like you're going for a walk so you're getting physically active but like you don't just have to walk and focus like i am walking you know like we walk without thinking yeah. so we don't need to like you know it's not like you're doing an intense run or anything like you can talk to people or or even like if you have the privilege like walking with your wife or walking with your friend or you know catching up with someone or 
Um, I remember if my friend was at the gym, uh, sorry, my friend was at work, I'd walk his dog. <laughs> cause like we don't have a yeah. dog. So I'd be like, man, can I take your dog yeah, for a yeah. walk? He'd be like, yeah. So I'll take the dog for a walk cause I love dogs, you know? So you're like, yeah, like it's, it's, it sounds pretty cheesy and pretty lame, but like, it's actually really like fun, like doing that stuff, like going for a walk. And like, once again, it's not extreme. It's not sexy. Like, Oh, he walks. Yeah, man, that's cool. You know, it's like, yeah, you, a, whatever works like, for you, man. Exactly, yeah, man. Exactly. And like, like, as you're saying, like spreading the message, that's what I do too. Like it's, it's such a, like, you know, low yeah. barrier to entry. Once again, like, Oh, you know, you want to make progress with fat loss, go for a walk. And it's like, Oh, okay, whatever. Like no one really takes you serious, but like, if yeah. I could point to anything that has helped my clients as much, you know, to get to their goals, like you're saying, it's helped you. I would say it's walking. Like it's, it's that stuff in between. Like that's, understanding meat that's levels. Really, that's, that was a huge key. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And, and, and like you're saying, like telling someone to get a Fitbit that like keeps you accountable to it. I think that's a big driver as well. Cause if you look at your watch, you're like, Oh, I've only done 2000 steps and it's 6 PM. You're like, Oh man, I better move because you know, that's yeah. a re like, that's a reality for a lot of people. Um, just to like, you know, we could talk for ages. I want to kind of you sure. know, start to wrap it up just because, uh, yeah, or else we'll be here for three hours. It'll be like a Joe Rogan, <laughs> Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, Joe Rogan. yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. um, I like to ask my guests. Well, I've I've started doing it recently, maybe the last three or four. But um, this podcast is the Better with Brock podcast, so it's about becoming better in any way. And we've talked about many reasons or many things, I should say, that get that can contribute to help you become better. Like if you want to become healthier, for example, we've talked about walking. You know, we've talked about flexible dieting. We've talked about you know, your body transformation, what obstacles you faced to get to where you are now. Um, but what's something you do, and this doesn't have to be related to fitness. What's something you do every day to, to help you become better? Yeah, man, that's such a good question. Um, so there, there, I think there's several things that I, that I do. Um, and, and really it all comes down to, especially this year kind of clicked for me. It's just, I think if I could sum it up in one word, it's just intentional, being intentional. Um, Cause I think if we kind of let life, you can just kind of cruise through life, through the week in your routines, but pushing yourself to do the things that are uncomfortable that are gonna help you grow is, is really where I'm at right now in my life. Because, you know, I'm a single man, um, you know, I'm just working, I don't have anybody depending on me. So now I'm like, now it's the perfect time for me to get my stuff together, get yeah. all my, you know, before I, you know, meet somebody or whatever happens down the road. Um, but one thing I do, you know, um, intentionally is I've been trying to do instead of like in the morning, instead of first thing I do getting on my phone, or, you know, looking through social media or whatever, you know, which is such an easy thing to do. Like you're waking up, you're like, it's you know, so easy. it's so easy. Cause it's like um, quick, quick dopamine, you know? And yeah. I, I put on a book or I put on, um, you know, I like to personally, I'm, you know, I'm a Christian and I like to read the Bible. So I, I'll put it on like audio Bible version and I'll do that just to get, that's the first thing that I'm listening to. Um, or if I'm just drinking my coffee, you know, I'll sit down and read a chapter or something in the morning um, and have like my devotion time and stuff. And if I start that in the morning, that kind of sets my day off right, you know? Um, I do. Just quickly like, on that, have, have you got any favorite verses or like your favorite verse that you have of all time? Like I've got one that I have, but like, have you got one? Ooh, that's, that's a, a tricky one, question, man. man. You got a lot of options. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of them, man. Um, hold on. I What's the one? What's the one or, or at the moment that's like, that really gets me going. I think it's crazy, man, because like it always changes for me. You know? Yeah, for like, sure. That's um, why I was saying like f for now, because yeah, like you go through things in life that require different guidance. Yeah, I was going to say I favorited something like recently. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, but I love like anything in Proverbs, honestly. Um, yeah, that's I don't know if I have a favorite verse. Is. Yeah, I, I think it's just it's in Proverbs. Um, let's see, hold on. I don't, I'm not good at memorizing stuff, but I'm going to look it up for you. But no, yeah. Right. So while you find it, uh, my one's uh, Proverbs 10, four, and I keep this, um, I read this out every morning too. It's um, lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. And mm -hmm. one thing I'll lead with is that's not just me trying to be rich because often when people think wealth, um, 
it's money. And it's true. Like, I think when I first read it, I was like, because I'm a hardworking person, I really get drawn to the word diligence. Like that's probably if, if, if one person said like to, to describe me, I think you would say I'm diligent. Like that's one thing that I've always tried to try to practice. Like I'm hardworking. So I guess it's because it favors my (laughs) confirmation bias Mm -hmm. that like hard work brings results, but it, it, it really helps me stay hard working because it's like lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Like it's so black and white. Like it's like, and you see it as you go through life. And, you know, I was about to say as you get older, but you know, I'm not that old, but I've seen a lot of people. I've, I've trained a lot of people. I've met a lot of people and like, yeah, it stands true. Like lazy people. And I'm not talking, trying to talk down on lazy people, but I just mean like, you know, people that, you know, maybe like you say, cruise and go through life and aren't intentional with what they want to do it makes for poverty and that doesn't mean that they're poor but like they're poor in the areas that they're lazy in so for example it's really easy to talk about work like if you're lazy at work you're probably not going to be the ceo or the cfo or a directing manager you know you're probably not going to have much responsibility because you're lazy so therefore in terms of work you're probably poorer than other people that are more hardworking, but the diligent, you know, and and then it says, but diligent hands bring wealth. I like that because it's like, you know, diligence and then it has hands in it, which requires like, you know, you, 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 you relate hands to work. So it's like diligent hands bring wealth. So the more you're diligent with your actions and the more you do in your life, the more wealthy you will be in those areas. Once again, it doesn't just mean if you're hardworking, you're rich. It means you're, in those areas. So if you spend a lot of time with your friends trying to help them through hard times or whatever, you'll probably have really strong relationships. So that's by far, like that's probably like my mission statement of life. Like what I stand by is like that saying lazy hands uh, make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth, which is Proverbs 10 for I'm pretty sure. What's your one? Did you manage to find it? Yeah, I found it. It's, it's also in Proverbs, but um you know, this one's a pretty common one that's, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Um, and I think for me, that just speaks to just basically, you know, um, we can try to figure everything out on our own. Um, but at the end of the day, we don't have all the answers, you know? Um, and so it's, it's really just about trying to continue to, to learn and to grow, you know? Um, I think for a lot of people, even if you're not religious or anything like that even if you're not religious if you read proverbs alone like there's so many nuggets of wisdom in that Man, book there's so many there's so many that you could apply directly to your life you know and that's i try to read in addition to whatever i'm reading in the, in general like whatever book i'm in at that time i always try to read at least one chapter of proverbs um because i just learned so much stuff there's another one that kind of goes on with what you were saying which is is more practical but it you know uh wealth from get rich quick schemes quickly disappears but wealth from hard work grows over time yeah yeah 100 percent. and like once again that's not just wealth in the bank account you yeah know, that's it's yeah that's wealth in all areas wealth in life yeah wealth in so many different areas you know yeah it's hard I've, work yeah i've got like I think how many is there on Proverbs? Like I could just quickly read them all out. Like there's so many, like, but mine are very along the same lines of the first one, because, <laughs> you know, once again, that's like what I gravitate towards. Yeah, um, for sure. But like, but this is pretty much the same thing. Like the soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied uh, and all toil. There is profit, but mere talk tends only to poverty. So that one's more so like, um, you know, in hard work or in adversity, there's profit. But like, if you just talk about things you're going to do, but don't actually do it, you know, not much is going to happen. Uh, This one is a big one. The power of the tongue is life and death. Those who love to talk will eat what it produces. And that was one that really caught myself up because like, you know, like sometimes you can catch yourself just talking about others. And I still catch myself to this day. Like I'm not perfect um, by any stretch but that really helped me like be careful with what I say and be really encouraging with people and be really cautious about what you say, because they're like knives, man. Like you throw them and it may be positive or, or not mean, like not mean to mean harm to people, but sometimes it does. So it's really important to be, to be cautious about what you say. Like, you know, I've got a ton more on there. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I often recommend proverbs to people too, like just for a place to start regardless of their religious outlook 
because yeah. it's, you know, that's founded in, in life as well. You know, that's founded in your experience and just it's truth. It's like, I think it's universal truth. Like there's no other way to say it. Like quick fixes get you rich. Like, you no, know, like everyone knows that, <laughs> you know, so it's yeah. nice to see it. <laughs> like and 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 read it i'm i'm totally on that so so sorry to jump in on your stuff but so being in no, um for you is is important and in the morning you so you read yeah. it. are there any other things you like intentionally do yeah just the small things man i think are uh, like we've been talking about like kind of the theme of this podcast it seems but you know make my bed in the morning um i'm big know, on just, that yeah yeah because it, it, it looks like it it's a small thing, but if you build that habit and, you know, it also affects, I think how our, our environment is and how we keep our environment affects our mental state and our, like our mood and everything. I notice when I'm like really busy or I'm really lazy, whichever one you want to call it. <laughs> I'm like, I, you know, the dishes start stacking up and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Like I, I, my mood changes, you know, it bleeds um, into your life. Yeah. So being diligent about like just do it right now do the thing that you don't want to do but you know you need to do just get in there and do it yeah i'm a i'm a big fan of that like do it now like do it now yeah Yeah. like like if you don't want to do it like because you do it now you don't have to do it later that's the better thing and 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 that's the thing that yeah once again bleeds into your life like for example if you want to buy a house it's like save now spend later like you have to think like that and it's the same thing like do what yeah. you need to do now because it, it, it creates a better opportunity for later, you know, or quality of life or whatever. It's like delayed gratification. One quote that I love, which ties in everything that you're saying is how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm. And that's one thing yeah. that, you know, that's why I make my bed because I'm like, <laughs> like now that I know that quote, I'm like, Oh man, like, you know, <laughs> like, like, Oh man, should I go do the dishes right now? Should I do the washing? Like, cause I want to be a person that does everything like how I, do anything you know so i want to yeah you know start like i think it helps you keep yourself to a high standard because it's easy to drop if you don't keep yourself accountable to that and it, it's true like you know when i'm tired or when i'm feeling lazy or not doing the dishes and they're stacking up like then i'm probably less diligent at work i might cruise a little bit more but if you're very intentional i like that word about what you do in the morning like it helps you be intentional about you know what you're doing when you know in your life like small thing like making your bed can make you a more organized person. Like I'm sure if you looked at everyone who made their bed and people that just ran out of the house, like without making their bed, you know, their life's going to be more chaotic, just like their bed, you know, like it's a small thing, but like, I'm sure that would be the case. I don't know if there's a study on that, but it just makes sense. It does. Yeah. It's, and it's, I'm such a personality wise, man, I'm not an organized person. So I, I've really had to like, it's a discipline almost. It's like, I've had to teach myself that skill, it is. you know, and especially in my profession, man, I really have to be organized to be successful, you know, cause the little things like you were saying add up, you know, in my, in my profession, if I don't do the little things in the week, if I slack off in those areas that I know I should be doing, um, and then the next week is going to be affected by that. And then conversely the week after that, and if I don't turn it around, you know, it's going to be a snowball effect. So I think it's the same thing. Like um, you can always say like, you know, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do this. But I think it's really important that you really be conscious of your day and just like plan out um, time for everything. Cause if you don't decide at the beginning of your day or, you know, ahead of time that you're going to do it, it won't get done. Um, you know, even just, even just do, making time for things I want to do. Like I, I love what I do and work wise, but it's, you know, it's not, necessarily my passion um i love music so making time to do music is important like put a time in the day 30 minutes let me sit down and work on this song or work on this even though it's something i want to do i don't always find myself doing it because i didn't plan it out ahead of time. i didn't make that decision before you know yeah or you weren't intentional about that time to come back to that word yeah. that you're using and i think that's how things slip by like you're talking about in life like for you it's a time for you as a single bachelor dude to to be intentional about what you want and work on yourself because when you have someone in your life you just don't have the freedom of you know let's say eight yeah. o'clock till 10 10 o'clock at night where you just want to you know you have that time to do music or you have that time to do your own thing because you you know to become one you know you're spending time on your relationship so um 100%. like i'm all for you in that space like you know if you're intentional throughout your day 
then you will allow time for music to occur or your hobbies to to have time for that. But if you don't, you're going to be unintentional about your time and things just kind of cruise by. Like you say, if you cruise in life, you know, like you just kind of, you don't get to do the things you want to do because things just jump on board. And I think that's one thing like I, I've always tried to be really on is like be intentional about where you're going. And that's like, you know, yeah. like I think sometimes I was a bit too intentional, like, you know, on the other side of things, <laughs> like really risking a lot, you know, I was just going out on a whim, like not much money, moving cities, moving countries and just kind of like, you know, like really kind of backing myself. But I was like, it, it was like this like super intentional, like I know what I want to do, so I'm just gonna do it. And like whatever I had to do, I would just do. And I, and you know, that's what happens when you're intentional. Like you, well, you're going to be more, you have a higher chance of achieving what you want to achieve. That's for sure. Because or else people just put stuff on your plate. Can you do this for me? Yeah. Can you do that for me? Oh, bro, can you do this? Or, or, or our, sometimes our natural human state is like, we just want to sleep in or we want to just chill and watch TV or, you know, just blob out. But if you're intentional, sometimes you've got to have the discipline to get up and do the things you need to do. Like you said, do the things you don't want to do you have to do them. You got to do them now. Yeah. Yeah. I, and there's a time and place for those things, but I think, um, you know, too often if you don't push yourself to do the things that are uncomfortable, you won't grow. Um, and you know, I, I, it's because I'm thinking ahead and I'm thinking like, yeah, there's gonna be a time when I don't, my time's not gonna be my time anymore. You know, it's, and then, you know, whether it's, you know, I'm married or eventually if I have kids or whatever, um, you know, I'm going to have to have these things figured out and locked in. So that, you know, I can, I can still do them and, and also have time for, you know, my family and stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's part of my thinking is long-term, you know, I'm, I'm looking down the road, but you know, it's, you got to like break it down, you know, what do I want to do a month from now. Okay. What do I need to do this week? And what do I need to do today to reach that, you know, these little yeah, goals. It's that whole reverse engineering concept. Like I'm doing the same, like, I think a big conversation that I've had with my clients and even on this podcast, like one thing that separates me as a trainer is like my, my prioritization of education and the importance of that, for yeah. example, neat levels and, you know, focusing on things like that, that's helped you flexible dieting, like introducing these ideas to my clients. Like I want to be a very educated personal trainer. So I've implemented this the last two weeks, every morning I wake up instead of doing what I usually do, where I would do my emails and start posting uh, I've been studying for an hour. So like even this morning, uh, like it's not the most exciting study, man, to be honest. Like I'm, I'm learning about the um, like electron transport chain and, you know, how to program <laughs> for a metabolic stimulus. And I'm like, like learning about the ATP cycle and what happens at the mitochondria, all this kind of stuff that like you probably will never hear. But if I understand it, then I can give you a basic thing of like, Hey man, like if you have a lot of oxidative stress in your lifestyle, like it's going to be hard to recover. So let's try get yeah. some stress management tools in your life. And here's a stress management tools video that I've made, you know, like I want to be that trainer. So like reverse engineering, being intentional about my time, I'm doing that now. So like, that's like, a, you know, an example, I guess, of what I'm trying to do to be intentional about being in being the, you know, one of the smartest personal trainers out there so that I can help my clients achieve things you know and have that low barrier to entry and kind of understand things yeah. in 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 your own language like yeah there's some concepts that require a bit of nerdism where you got to you know speak the lingo but sometimes it's just like being really basic like for example get 10,000 steps if i say that to you you understand what that means but like the science behind it is like people that live in the blue zone are often more physically active and blue zones are uh, areas in the world that people live longer. So like there's heaps of studies on there, but you don't need to know that you just need to know to do 10,000 steps a day, you know, and just simple things like that. That's not rocket science, but you know, other trainers aren't sometimes talking about that. They're talking about how many ounces of chicken breast they have. And like, you don't know why you're doing it. I think it's, it's um, like a, a key point there, man, is what you said is you're doing the things right now. That's going to help improve your ability to help people as a trainer and set you apart you know it's going to make you a better trainer right it's not going to make you a worse trainer oh 100 yeah <laughs> it's gonna, yeah it's gonna, you're going to understand the theory and the the reasoning the why really um on these yeah. concepts and, and be able and, to yeah and i don't want to like to be honest with you i don't want to watch these videos <laughs> you know like no like for sure like, like i want the result of them 
but like you have to go through the process and that's kind of the thing like i'm doing the thing i don't want to do early in the morning because i just want to get it out of the way and i know it sounds bad like i don't really care for my education i do but like i don't find that stuff interesting man i'm a personal trainer like yeah. i like lifting weights i like sport i like talking to you i like like there's certain things i do that i like that i don't find this podcast hard like we've almost talked for two hours this has not been hard at all you know right. like this is very easy i find this easy but what i struggle with is study like so mm -hmm. i have to do that because if I don't, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to out of my own whim go, man, I feel like learning about the, you know, the ATP system and how that occurs. And, you know, it's relation to A and PK. I'm like, like, I don't want to do that, but you have to do the things that you don't want to do. Like you, do. you have to, you have to wake up and make your bed, man. hundred percent, man. I think it applies in so many areas of your life, man. Like if you're a musician, right. You, um, like a lot of, if your job is to be a musician, right. you a lot of what you do, you love but there's parts of it that you have to do that you don't love. So you can be better at what you do. Like, you know, understanding, um, like learning how to program and, and produce a mix on software or reading books on, on songwriting or, or, you know, music theory and stuff, understanding the mechanics of things and progressing and continuing to educate yourself. Like all those things can apply in so many different areas. So I think it's really important that I like that you highlight that and talk about, the not fun parts too you know um, oh yeah like, hey there's there's stuff that i have to just grind out you know yeah because that's what um, you have to do to if better. you want to like separate yourself because as we're saying it's not a natural thing to be drawn to hard work like yeah like you yeah like if you look at animals in the animal kingdom like you, you know you see lions hanging out like they're just lying around like you don't see them practicing their jump on like hunting zebras or you know you know that like our natural state is just like to chill but these days like if you want to succeed i feel like in an area that you know like that you enjoy there are things that you don't enjoy yeah like you know for music learning the circle of fifths or learning the i don't know like melodic minor scale like doing stuff like that i remember doing that at jazz school i was like this sucks you know I was, like, <laughs> yeah, sure. I was like, I remember doing scales oh, for you. hours. I was like, I hate scales, yeah. you know, like, but no, you have sure. to, I, I would do it for hours just so that yeah. when a song came and someone played a certain chord, I would know in context that I could refer to that scale and bust out a riff. And it, it, it's just like my studies, like if I'm doing a Q and A and someone asks me, Hey Brock, like, you know, like, um, by any chance, would you know anything about ATP? And I'll be like, Oh, well, you know, here we go. Yeah. Bang. You know, like I, I'm unarmed yeah. and like, I, I know what I'm talking about in that area. Um, man, we have to wrap this up because we'll be here for ages. Um, I just want to thank you, bro. Sure. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, dude. I think it's, you know, it's been super insightful just for me to, to know, even though I was your coach, to know what you've gone through. But I think super helpful for the listeners to understand, you know, how hard it is to, to transform your body, what it takes, but also how easy it can be. And also the mindset it takes to achieve certain things in the physical fitness world and how that can be applied to our life, which we've just talked about, you know, on that last question, what, what do you do to become better? We've probably riffed on it for about half an hour now. Like it's like, that's what I really love too, self-development. And I think people can really take a lot out of this podcast, man. So I appreciate your time, man. Dude, thanks so much for having me on, man. And yeah, I love this stuff too, man. I love um, like connecting over these type of things. I'm passionate about it. Like you are. And um, I could go on for hours, honestly, you know, <laughs> having a conversation like this. I think we both could, man. But yeah. it's so awesome, man. I, I really love it, man. And um, just being able to share like a little bit of a, my journey, man. I love being, if it helps somebody, if somebody hears this and they, it helps them kind of get over what's hindering them from starting their journey or whatever the case may be, man, that, that would just be amazing. So thanks for, thanks for having me on, man. It's awesome. Oh, you're welcome, man. Thanks for being a part of it. I think it could be something like, you know, like you were saying, you were following me for a while and you saw transformation photos and you saw like evidence of what can work and that help you took action. And, and, I, and I'm not saying that everyone listen, listening to this is going to sign up to train with me, but I mean, like it can help promote them to, to take action to, to whatever goals they want to take. And I think that's the main thing that I want to achieve from this podcast, man. So yeah, once yeah. again, I appreciate your, your input, your stories, your advice, uh, your experience. And I'm sure I'll see you on uh, one of the next Built by Brock coaching calls. Uh, yeah, we're going sure. into week six this week. Um, so, yeah, three weeks left of the challenge. Keep crushing it, brother. And, um, yeah, we'll be chatting very soon. I appreciate your time, man. We'll talk soon. 
All right, man. For sure. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Catch up. All right, man. See you later.